top off your health in any Ninja Turtles game, you need pizza, and today we're going to make a pie that I think my favorite Ninja Turtle would enjoy. Welcome to Darren's Digital Diner, where I make food from and inspired by video games. And as we've already established, we're crafting pizza from Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles which is going to be a Hawaiian pizza. And yes, I know there is a lot of outrage about if pineapple goes on pizza or if it does not go on pizza. And frankly, I don't care. I think it's delicious. So we're going to make the dough, a New York inspired sauce, and combine it all into a cast iron pan to create a delicious combination of sweet and salty and cheesy. Now, some quick history. Pizza wasn't always synonymous with the turtles. No, that didn't happen until they became a mass market powerhouse with the release of the 1987 Saturday morning cartoon. Before that, the turtles liked beer. And if you didn't know, the comics were super dark, specifically the image comics run from 96 to 99. Leonardo lost a hand, Raphael became disfigured and was the shredder for a little while, Donatello turned into a cyborg after dropping from a helicopter, and Michelangelo was the only one not disfigured. He got away pretty much easy, but to be fair, in the original Mirage run, he was a tour guide for Earth, fell in love with a Starachodon princess, got captured and tortured by the Starachodons off planet, then escaped and then helped the Triceratons commit acts of genocide against them as retribution. Yeah, back on topic, when the first two games came out in 1989, the arcade brawler and the NES action adventure, pizza was an obvious choice for the turtles to top off their life bars since these were largely the same turtles from the 87 cartoon. More relaxed, more goofy, less dark, less damaged. So let's make what I think my favorite Ninja Turtle, Michelangelo, would enjoy. To kick this off, we'll adopt a no-knead dough method from J. Kenji Lopez Alt. In a food processor, combine two and a half cups of flour, two teaspoons of salt, one teaspoon of instant yeast, and one teaspoon of sugar. Pulse to combine and then add one cup plus three tablespoons of water and two teaspoons of olive oil. Pulse and combine until you have a nice supple ball of dough. No, we didn't weigh anything. Yes, it's fine. Trust me. Turn that out onto a floured work surface, removing any sharp bits that might have gotten stuck in there, and gently form into a ball. Toss into a bowl and cover with plastic wrap and let it sit at room temperature for at least 8 hours or up to 24. We're doing 24 hours for this one. It's the next day and we've seen substantial growth in our little dough boy. Place onto a floured work surface and gently bring it together into a ball and tuck it under itself. Remember, no kneading required. Cut it in half and summon your cast iron pan. Drop in about two tablespoons of olive oil and add in one piece of the dough. Spread the oil and coat both sides and then realize you may have a little bit too much olive oil and then wipe some out. From there, cover in plastic wrap and let it sit again at room temperature for two hours. While that's going on, we'll make our sauce, a New York City inspired one also courtesy of Lopez Alt. Start by adding 28 ounces of San Marzano tomatoes to a food processor and pulse until your desired consistency, but it should have a smidge of chunkiness to it. Cut off one tablespoon of butter and add it to one tablespoon of olive oil in a large enough pot and start heating on medium to low heat. Quarter and peel one yellow onion and mince or microplane two cloves of garlic. Once the butter has melted with the oil, add the garlic, a teaspoon of dried oregano, a pinch of salt, and I like to add a teaspoon of red pepper flakes. The kick mellows out as the sauce simmers, creating a nice little heat without being overpowering. Stir often until all those ingredients are fragrant, which should be about two to three minutes. Add in your tomatoes, onion, a teaspoon of sugar, and one sprig of basil. Heat up to a simmer and then cut the heat to low and let it go for about an hour and a half to two hours. Stir it occasionally and check for seasoning. After the time has passed, pick out the basil and the onion and voila, the sauce is done. Time for the toppings. We'll need four slices of Canadian bacon, a half slab of bacon, and a pineapple. Fun fact, this is my first time cutting off a pineapple, so feel free to judge away, but you'll want to cut off the tops and shave the sides down. I don't have a decor thingy, so I just worked around the core and chopped up the pineapple into manageable chunks. Very technical. Grab the Canadian bacon and cut into your desired sizes, and do the same for the bacon. Cook the bacon into the doneness you like, I went for crispy, and drain onto a paper towel. Add the Canadian bacon back to the same pan, cook for a few minutes for some color, and then add in the pineapple to do the same thing. All in all, it's probably about 4 minutes on medium heat. Add it all together and make a little mess in the process. For the cheese, we'll use low moisture mozzarella from the fridge and grate it into oblivion just before assembly so it doesn't get sticky. Finally, it's assembly time. 
After the dough has sat for two hours, heat up the oven to 550 degrees or as high as your oven can go and start stretching the dough to the sides with your knuckles and fingertips. It may fight back a little bit at the start, but it shouldn't be too much of a chore. I like to bring it up just a little bit on the sides, at which point the dough will relax back down and sit in the pan perfectly. Add in two scoops of our sauce, probably about half to three quarters of a cup, and spread to the edges. Being from Wisconsin, I like a lot of cheese, so I put a fair amount on and then added our toppings. Toss all that into the oven and let it ride for about 12 to 15 minutes. Since my oven only goes to 500 degrees, the bottom isn't as golden as I'd like, so I place it on the stovetop on medium heat for roughly a minute to a minute and a half. If you do this, watch carefully as it can burn very quickly. Yes, I have done that before. In the end, here's a pizza I think the turtles, specifically Michelangelo, would eagerly pick up for a health boost in their video game. The cheese is melty, the sauce is rich and has a soft kick from the red pepper, and the dough is both crunchy and soft at the same time. And since I had some left over, I also made a classic NYC cheese pizza. Same deal, just, you know, don't add anything but cheese. Modify the toppings however you want, but just know, pineapple totally belongs on pizza.